G'day, fellas. Welcome to another video on Ethiopia, the brand new civilization that's going to be releasing on August 2 with the new African Royals expansion pack for Age of Empires 3. Now, I'm going to be coming at you with a bit of a different video today. So this is actually a recorded uh, game that I played. Now, I can't actually bring you the rec or the, you know, the replay, the standard replay. And the reason why is because it's, it's out of sync because there's been a new patch uh, so what I'm going to do is actually bring you the recording of me playing this game and bring it to you live. So the person that we're playing up against is Aiken. So this player is an incredibly talented player. I'll put his stats up on the screen at the moment so you can have a look at them. He jumped into my lobby and uh, he said to me, Oh, what civilization uh, would, you, would you like me to play? And I said, I don't mind. You, you just play anything at all you like. And he said, all right, I'm going to play Japan. And as soon as he played Japan, I actually decided to switch. I was originally planning to play Hausa, uh, but I actually switched back to Ethiopia because I want to try this build order out. So this build order is the semi-FF build order that I was wanting to try. So with this build order, essentially the idea is that we're going to be hitting up to the Fortress Age, ideally around the nine minute mark. Uh, and, and that's what we're aiming to achieve. So in the early game here, we're playing up against Japan. So I'll do my best to explain what's going on so at this stage, we've dropped down our house, we've got our market upgrade, and now we're sending in our first shipment, which is the two settlers as well as the one Abun. And with this, we're just looking to uh, get out on the map, try and discover as many hunts as possible. Spot a nice little treasure up here to the north. Now, one of the things to note is with this ability, you can actually fire off a couple of shots before you actually uh, can use the ability. That way you can get more DPS out on the Guardians. So you might have seen me there. So I pull out... The Guardians, I get off two shots on the Lion, and then I use that Chaos ability on uh, both of the animals and get them uh, and, and begin to focus them down uh, with that Chaos ability. And then that way I just sort of save a little bit of HP eventually. Now, one of the most important things is that you've got this, uh, this building, the Granary, very, very close uh, to your town center or to your starting hunts, because that, as you can see, I've got that little aura around my villages. That's going to be increasing the amount of of uh, food that my villagers are gathering. Now my shipment has arrived, so what I've done is I've actually sent my Abun out. You can see at the bottom of the map, my Abun is doing a little bit of scouting. There's nothing else he can really do at the moment, so he's a healer, uh, so he's going out. He's just doing a bit of scouting, and ideally what we want to do is just locate enemy hunts because we are playing against the Japanese. So our idea is that we're going to be looking to have a nice forward base in the center of the map to, uh, to sort of leverage our strength from, and then use that to go out so going up now we're going to be going up with the jesuits and then in the transition period we're going to be moving all of our villagers over onto wood once we get that market upgrade so you can see it's coming in now three two one there it is so that's a i think it's a five percent bonus to your uh wood gathering so it costs 50 uh 50 food so not a huge amount and also sending in that next shipment so that's the 200 uh 200 influence with every uh, subsequent shipment. So it's our second shipment. Uh, and so we're going to be doing a timing uh, with with that. So it's really important that we try and get that in as soon as possible. Now that we're dropping down the first house. So the idea is in the transition period, I want to gather 330 wood and then all of my villagers are going to be going back onto food. And the idea is I need 100 food for a house, 200 food, uh, sorry, 100 wood for a house, 200 wood for a war camp, and then 30 wood for my very first Gascania, which is going to be going into queue. And then I'm waiting for that 700 wood that comes in, and then I'll finish the batch. So now you can see I'm, I'm getting close to that mark. I've got 210 wood now in the bank, and I'm, I'm looking for hunts, or, or looking for shrines rather, and at the same time doing my best to herd in all of the hunts. I've got three hunts at the moment around my town center. I've got two giraffes to the north, and then I've got the Southern Hunt, which I think is a bunch of gazelles. So now I've got enough wood that I don't need to worry about any more wood. So hopefully going to be transitioning those villages off wood onto food as quickly as possible. Two villages going to be moving out for that forward base as well. Church Wagon gets dropped down, as well as the Mountain Monastery, which is going to be going onto that Queen Mine right there. And now I'm bringing villages in. They're going to be picking up these XP crates because I need to be getting in uh, my next shipment, which is going to be that 700 wood. And so by aging up with the Jesuits, I get that 400 experience in the crates, uh, just kind of like the United States. There it is. So now sending in that that 700 wood. Plenty of villages in queue. I've ever gathered about 38 wood, but it's not a particularly big deal. I don't think it's going to affect our batches a whole bunch. You can see that we've got our forward base that's under construction at the moment. 
And so with that forward base, as I mentioned, that's, that's our base of operations. We're going to be using that as our centralized point. Uh, and we actually spot that the opponent is shrining right next to it. So basically giving us some free shrines. So very happy to take that. In this, the idea is that you essentially want to get up to the Fortress Age. You want to dampen your opponent's... Uh, what's the best way to say it? You want to stop the opponent from getting uh, out an expansion for free. 700 wood is now arriving. I've got three villagers picking it up as quickly as possible. And the idea is that we want to be finishing this batch. So once this batch is finished... Now I'm going to be moving my villagers over, manually moving them over onto uh, the influence crates because I need to get my next shipment in, which is the all-important cannoneers. So these are Portuguese cannoneers. You see them coming in now. They cost 500 influence, and they're basically like Abus guns, but they're much better than Abus guns because they cost half the population, so they only cost one population, and they do a slightly less damage. And now Abus guns typically are going to be overkilling your enemy units a lot, so this is a great thing because they're doing less damage uh, as a result. So a really, really nice change or a really, really good unit. I'm a big fan of these units. Continuing to siege down enemy units now or enemy shrines. We're at the 6 minute and 13 mark. We've taken out our first shrine. It looks like we're about to get our second shrine down. Moving Gaskenias across the north of the map. Also going to be continuing to siege down those shrines in the north. And we've got those reinforcements that are going to be coming in from the home city. So the idea is that we just want to get this small force out initially. This small force is what's going to be providing us the ability to deny these shrines on the opponent's map. So here again, spotting a monk up to the north. The idea is that we want to prevent him from shrining. Or if he does get shrines up, just simply sieging them down. That's not a big deal. So now we've got our cannoneers out. Uh, and some uh, some pretty awkward timing here. So just as the cannoneers come out and I move them to the north, there's a bit of a raid coming in now to the south. 700 golds now coming in. So this coin is going to be providing us the coin that we need to age up. So there's the Ashigaru coming in down towards the south. Uh, going to be moving our villages into the town center. But one of the things you've got to be careful of, so a, a little bit of a mistake that I made there, is the Abun is a military unit. So that means if you select one Abun... Or, or you do like a drag box with the Abun and 20 villagers. It's not going to select the villagers. It's only going to select the Abun. Very frustrating to deal with. It happens all the time. So something that you've got to be very cognizant of uh, when, when you're microing. But now I've got those cannoneers out there beginning to lay waste to the enemy unit composition. And you can see that it's a very potent uh, combination for the Japanese opponent to deal with. There's no real way for them to deal with it in the early game. He's going to need to be massing up Yumi, probably going to need to get to that critical mass of about 15 Yumi before he's really able to deal with it. But the problem is that the cannoneers do so much work in comparison uh, to the Yumi archers. Your best bet's probably going for some naggies. Uh, but the consequence of doing that is that it's going to take a while for him to transition into that. And if he wants to do that, he's probably going to have to stay in age two. And he wants to get up to age three as well as quickly as possible. So now that that 700 coin is is in, we're looking to get that age up in. But obviously, I don't have a lot of coin at the moment saved up. So probably need to do a bit more refining when it comes to this build order. But at the moment, I am pretty happy with it. Just simply because it allows me to really take control of the map. You can see now where well, this is probably the sixth or the seventh shrine that we've actually burnt down. So doing quite well. Now sending in four villages. So the idea is we're going to queue up a, a couple of villages. We're going to overpop with these four villages as they come in. It should have been the other way around. It should have been the four villages first and then the 700 coin, but that's okay. It's one of those things when, you, when you're learning these new build orders, it takes time. And now dropping down uh, more and more uh, of our granaries that are going to be luring in those hunts. They're also going to be providing us that beautiful AoE. And now snaring up the opponent's Yumi and then getting our units out towards the north there, just trying our best to, to get them out. We've got quite a fair bit of idle units here at the moment or idle villages so just want to make sure that we continue working our way uh, around that. And now more down towards the south, continuing to clear those units or the, those uh, those buildings out. So a little bit of a mistake by me here. So getting caught up towards the north, uh, it, it's not a big deal because I'm only use, losing about five units. I'm buying myself a lot of time. I'm now going to be able to click up to the next age. So going to be going up. Uh, with the Portuguese, the Portuguese are really important for you to be getting up to at least in the second or the third age. Ideally, it would be the third age. And the reason why is because you actually unlock the ability to train cannoneers. So these cannoneers, I've sent them in from the home city. So let's say hypothetically, I didn't want to send them in from the home city. I wanted to actually train them. I could do that with the influence that I've got. So I could train the cannoneers from... Now, it needs to be a special building. It needs to be the palace. You can't just train these from your war camp. 
You're going to have to make a separate building for that. Now we spot Ashigaru and Yumi coming down from the north, looking to get a little bit of a raid in. So going to be doing our best just to pull our villagers back in. A little bit of a mistiming for me. So I've already lost two villagers. That's the third villager that's going to go down and the fourth villager. So losing four villagers, a pretty decent uh, chunk of my economy, unfortunately, going down. I could be sitting on 28 villagers right now, but unfortunately sitting on 24. So not the best. Also getting a, a another food upgrade that's just coming in. And now the idea is that I want to be uh, continuing to train Gascania. So that's my uh, my musketeer unit that I've got plenty of them out. Uh, and then I'm going to be sending in more shipments from the home city once we get up to the next stage. I'm also researching uh, the faster age up. So it's about to pop right now. There it is. So aging up at 10 minutes 42. So not a terrible time considering my opponent is still in age uh, too as well. Uh, so we put out a fair bit of pressure here. Continuing to push north with the Gaskenya. And we're going to be sending in our big boy. I don't actually remember what the name of the... Oh, I think it's the Sebastopol Cannon is the name of this cannon. But uh, I like to just call him the big boy. Uh, there's a couple ways that you can go about sending this in. Whether you want to make a forward outpost or a forward uh, uh, location that you can then send it in. Because just keep in mind, it is a very, very, very slow unit. I think the movement speed is about 2.5 movement speed a second. It might be 3. I'm not sure. We'll have to double check when it actually comes in. Uh, but a very, very slow unit. It takes its time to come in. So it's one of those things, if you want to build that forward base, it's definitely going to help you out. Now, getting that veterancy upgrade, uh, it gets it for the the uh, Nes Neskanias, I think, and the Gaskanias. Oh, sorry, the Neftanias and the Gaskanias. So now we can see the big boy moving out uh, and just being a little bit careful just to, to make sure that uh, our macro is on point, uh, beginning to train up and, and finish a batch of uh, Gascan or Ga yeah, Gaskanias out here now. And the most important part here is just making sure that we attack the throat of the enemy. So often you'll you'll sort of like chase the enemy around the map, go after shrines. And so what I'm doing here is I'm just killing shrines while I'm waiting for my mortar to come through. You can see it's got a base movement speed of 2.5. And so I'm just clearing out the middle while I wait for that mortar to come in. I can't really do anything until that mortar comes in. And so now dropping in that next shipment point, that's going to be the, the all-important uh, palace. So from this palace, I'm going to be able to train more Portuguese cannoneers. I'm also going to be able to set it as a shipment point. So whether I want to send in mercenaries from the home city, whether I want to send in more unit shipments from the home city, I'm going to be able to do it with that palace that's coming up right now. So macro is looking pretty good at the moment. I'm, I'm very happy with this. The most important thing that I'm going to need to do is just protect my cannon, my Sebastopol mortar. And now we see the, ne the first shipment's coming in. So this is mercenary. So I'm bringing in Santa Horseman. These guys are like Mamelukes. You get five of them instead of four of them. Uh, and they are slightly weaker, uh, but they have an increased damage output versus artillery. So very, very good against artillery. And considering my opponent is Japanese, he's got flaming arrows out already. We've spotted those. I, I figure, you know what? It's going to make sense for us to do that. So now I've set the shipment point towards my forward base and the timing begins. So now I'm, I'm trying to, my best to just uh, bait him into a fight uh, underneath my palace so that I can get a good pop. You can see the way that I'm moving back. And now my Sebastopol Mortar is going to get another shot off, taking out another three Yumi there and just sending them over the cliff. I've got to be a little bit careful as the Nagis run in. I'm going to try my best to body block, managing to body block him and just shooting two Nagis away with the Sebastopol Mortar. My Gascania numbers are getting lowered and lowered and lowered. But now we've got the Santa Horsemen that are about to pop out. We need to keep this Sebastopol Mortar alive. It looks like it's taking some shots over at the shrine to the south there. But now the Mamelukes... Uh, come out. I say Mamelukes. They're not Mamelukes. They are those Santa Horsemen. 1,200 HP on these guys. A very, very low amount of attack, though, and they get on top. And from here, it's just looking like an absolute cleanup. I'm very happy with this position. My mortar is still alive. I'm continuing to train units out of double military production buildings. I've stopped making settlers altogether at this point. I'm just training Gascanias, and I'm just forcing them into my opponent's base. I really want to just keep him on the ropes now. I've got all of my uh, military units that are pushing up, beginning to idle him now. So the uh, coin mine that he's out here gathering, it's going to force him to be idled on. The Sebastopol Mortar now takes out that shrine and we continue pushing towards the base. And the idea is that I just want to reinforce and make sure that my military remains relatively big enough that it can protect this Sebastopol Mortar because it all comes down to this mortar and just making sure that it's going to survive. It really puts the burden on the opponent and says, by me having this, this mortar... You're going to have to come to me. Otherwise, I'm just going to continue sieging down your base. And that's exactly what happens. 
So now my military is starting to look a little bit better, sending in the shipment from the home city, now training five cannoneers from that palace, also training double batches of Cascanias as well, looking very decent. I send my Santa horsemen underneath that uh, that outpost or that tower because I'm, I'm fearful, or sorry, castle. I'm fearful that if I don't do that, then there's going to be a pop of flaming arrows and I want to prevent that from happening. Now more Gascania are coming in as well. And we see the reinforcements coming in from the opponent, calling Minutemen, calling nine Ashigaras from the home city, doing his best now to try and focus this big boy cannon down. We see we've also got some uh, pikes coming in from the right-hand side and really just focusing it down. I, I kind of do a little bit of a, a miss macro here with my cannon, unfortunately leaving him on the front line. I really need to pull him to the back and he does go down. But at the end of the day, I'm still able to to manage to overwhelm my opponent. More Nagis coming in at this point. But keep in mind, because of those Santa Horsemen, they're very strong, got a lot of HP. I'm able to leverage the power of them and overwhelm my opponent. And there, good game. Doesn't quite so get called, but 1200 HP Cav is the call. I hope you guys have enjoyed this look at the semi-fast fortress for the Ethiopians. If you've enjoyed this video, I encourage you to leave a like. If you've got any questions about the build order, make sure you leave a comment and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Thank you so much for watching.